This is the final part of rebuilding a Stuart Models Twin Victoria steam engine. This covers making the base. This is the original base you can see here, nicely covered in doll's house wallpaper, and a very rough piece of wood. This is a new base that I've just had made by a friend of mine, made out of top quality birch plywood, and it's really good. All I have to do now is veneer the base, and it will look the business. Some people will just cut the base for a steam engine out of a solid piece of mahogany, but I prefer to plank it and make it look like floorboarding. It just makes the thing look a little bit more authentic, while still keeping the presentation quality. The first thing to do is to select the mahogany you're going to use and cut it to length. For the inset pieces where the flywheel goes, what I did was I cut them purposely rough so you could see that you must always have the rough edge to the top, because the rough cut edge will be sanded off when you sand the planking. Normally I would use cyanoacrylate adhesive to stick planking onto wood, but unfortunately I'm running low on it, so I'm going to use some woodworking adhesive, some PVA. It's a lot less smelly, but it doesn't grab quite as quickly. Here you see me using the last of my cyanoacrylate adhesive to stick these two mahogany boards down inside the recess required for the flywheel. It's always very important to use plenty of adhesive, don't skimp on this, and make sure the adhesive is well spread. I'm using a piece of scrap mahogany to spread the adhesive, because if you don't get the adhesive to grab on all of it, parts of it may warp over time and we do not want this to happen. The whole point of making this solid base, and it really is solid out of this thick plywood, is that A the engine will not resonate too much on it, and the base will not warp over time, which would cause problems with the engine. Don't go too mad with the adhesive though, you don't want to get it all over the place. Working with cyano is an acquired taste. I do it all the time, I'm very used to the speed at which this stuff grabs. You only get it wrong once, and if you do get it wrong, it's quite difficult to get the piece of wood off without using a chisel. But as I said, the good thing about cyano is that it grabs quickly. But it's quite important to make sure that you have something to press it in place, and here I'm using some scrap pieces of mahogany as spacers which hold the mahogany tightly against the plywood, and the cyano will grab very quickly, so in no time at all we can carry on with the next bit, which is planking the top. Having selected a good colour match on the mahogany, these are half inch planks, I'm about to stick them down. PVA is okay for this job, but I still prefer cyano. I find it easier to sand off the top surface. If you get loads of PVA on the top surface, it's a little bit rubbery and more difficult to sand. Once you've spread it out, and I'm using a liberal coating as you can see here, use a piece of scrap mahogany to smooth it out into a continuous layer. And always make sure that you've got plenty of adhesive in there. It would be tragic if the planks were to lift or warp at a later date. Owing to the dimensions of this baseboard, I had to cut a thinner plank as you can see here. It all depends on the physical dimensions of the piece that you're planking. This process, by the way, is exactly the same as planking the floor and the deck of a model boat. As can be seen in my DVD set, How to Build a Model Steam Launch, where it's shown in much more detail. And I do mention in the DVD, that planking is a very laborious and very boring process and there's some times when you have to leave it alone. Because if you get bored you're likely to make a mistake. This was a fiddly bit to do. At each side I needed to put a very thin piece of mahogany on. Sticking on long thin pieces of mahogany is much easier with cyano because it grabs so much more quickly and I needed some help to hold the piece in position until the PVA had grabbed. Normally I would use masking tape for this job, but I couldn't find the masking tape when I was making the video, so I used some electrical tape. It's not as good as masking tape because it doesn't stick as well to the wood parts, but it did the job for this. So when everything's nice and dry and everything's solid, it's time to go to the belt sander to clean up the edges, before putting the mahogany round the outside edge. All I'm doing here is just removing the overhanging mahogany. I'm not using a new belt, so it's not cutting terribly well, but that's a good thing because if you use a new belt, it's a bit vicious. But you must keep the work moving. If you hold it in one place, it's likely to burn, and that can look unsightly. It's important to keep the work square to the face of the belt sander. If you don't do that, and you start to cut at an angle, then there's going to be a gap when you put the side pieces around it. Take your time, and get it right first time.
once the sides are sanded smooth, it's time to fix the pieces around the edge. These are thicker pieces of mahogany board. And once again I'm using PVA adhesive and electrical tape as you can see here, but then I found my masking tape. Masking tape is far better for this job as it sticks to the wood. All you have to do now is just leave it until the adhesive sets. Then using an orbital sander, not a rotary sander and certainly not the belt sander, rub all the surfaces down until it's very smooth. Then you can apply the first coat of varnish. I generally apply varnish using a cloth when I'm making these things. It just gives a better finish. I don't want a brushed varnish finish. I don't like the look of that. I want it to look almost waxed, but I don't want to use wax because wax tends to react with the water and the steam oil. I always use polyurethane varnish. I have done for years and this is what I use. This is Ron Seal Hard Glaze, polyurethane varnish. It gives a good finish and it's very durable. And it looks great, especially when the engine's mounted on it. Here the engine's just sat on the board to get the final position. This is a very solid baseboard, unlike the previous one, which was far too soft. When I screwed the engine down to the original baseboard, it was actually distorting the cast iron. This is a very solid platform for this engine, and it's mounted using 4BA studding, with at least 3 quarters of an inch of the studding, down into the baseboard itself. These studs are fitted by using a couple of lock nuts, locked together, and it's just a simple job to screw them into the wood. This base is a very solid, very level platform for this engine, and here you can see it running. It's still a little tight in places, but it's going to run very well once it runs in. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.